هستم
not. Hallelujah. I needed to play this one today so that it may wake me up. I'm a little bit asleep. This one is bound uh, to wake me up. Look at Unesquen. <laughs> I'm sorry, we are in Agagel. I needed to get a Sabella today. It's one of those days that I needed to get a Sabella. Bless the Lord. Greet you, saints, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Good to be with you. I needed to get a Sabella today. I'm sorry. We are in Agagel. I was not going to work for me. I'm a bit uh, drowsy in a little way, overworked, overwhelmed. So I needed something that will boost me and pick me up instantly and Ungia Sabela is sure to do that on the spot. Thank you so much Mpostila for oh, giving me the grace of using these songs. I feel so honored. It's really, really humbling uh, for me to have rights, legal rights to the songs. It's, it's, it's an honor. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Greet you saints. Um, Good to have you. Welcome, Bosilus Tele. Bless you, man of God. Um, bless you. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Zolani, bless you, man of God. Yes, yes, Amela is something else. Really, it's evergreen. It is evergreen. I must say that. Evergreen. Bless the Lord. And Octula, bless you, my baby. Bless you. Koliswa, bless you. Bless you. Stand with some. Uh, Pastor Zen Skate, bless you, woman of God. Bless you, Toto. Bless you, my darling. Pastor Nono, bless you, woman of God. Bless you, Prophet Unati. Uh, bless you. Bless you, Nori. Bless you, Bungi. Bless you, Nopundi. So bless you. I'm not alone today. The Nono or Nopundi is here, but they decided to hide. Uh, they hide in a corner somewhere. They just ran away and hid themselves. Um, bless the Lord. It's good to, to have you uh, today. Uh, I'm excited about the message today. It, it, it did not come easy. I struggled a little bit to, to get this message, but yeah, it's a good message. It's a, it's a rhema word. I feel it's a rhema word being led by the Spirit of God in a, in a time where you find that people are, are led by emotions. There's a message that I, I once shared it's on my YouTube page. You can get that message there. It says, uh, making spiritual decisions emotionally. Making spiritual decisions emotionally. That's, that's, a, that's a dangerous thing. Um, when you are in a, in a, in a place that is, that is bad or, or oppressed, oppressed uh, emotionally, and then you make decisions that will affect your spirituality at that time, it's very dangerous. Uh, if you find yourself in a place of frustration, in a place of depression and oppression and things are coming over you, uh, it's, it's important not to make spiritual decisions that are, are drastic about you, 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 your ministry, about where you go to church and all that. Uh, just take time and, and maybe retreat inside yourself because there's something that we don't understand is that we can actually retreat just inside of, of ourselves, not retreat out there. Retreat inside yourself. Just work in your inside while you're still out there because what the enemy wants to do every time he attacks you, he wants to take you off the game. That's his main purpose. Take you off the game. Don't refuse to be taken out of the game. That is critical. Refuse to be taken out of the game. Continue. Press on. You know, those lepers, they showed us a perfect example. People who were bruised, who were broken, who were rejected. They, they were hurt in so many ways. But the lepers, they stood up. They made a decision at that moment that we are going to go to the Aramean camp and look for food. Because if we don't go, we die here and anyway. If we go, we die anyway. So they took the decision. We'd rather die on the battlefield. We'd rather die for a cause. We'd rather die doing something. But for us, we tend to retreat. I don't know uh, this, this 
attitude and, and, and this spirit that we have of, of, of retreating and getting away from God, why would you get away from the place? Because my belief is that God is a source of your strength. God is where you draw strength, where you draw your wisdom. Why take yourself away from the very thing that should be strengthening you, that should be giving you the power to continue? You can't unplug yourself. Stay plugged. Stay plugged. And then you will recover. You will gain strength. Stay plugged. But for believers today, there's this attitude that I must go. Uh, I think we have uh, the, 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 the mindset of the world. The mindset of the world has infiltrated us so much that we we really, really always on the on the, on the borders of, of everything, we never fully into something. The word says that uh, take a hibernation, go away, like to retreat and, and do all those things. The, the, those are the systems of the world and we, we find scriptures to make the systems of the world work. They are Eastern systems, they are Eastern religions to God. You throw yourself on the altar, you die on the foot of the cross, you perish in the presence of the Lord. You don't go out there into the peripheral. You don't go to Lodeba and disappear. Lodeba is not your place. Lodeba is not where you belong. You don't go to the peripherals. You stay here. Run the race. Paul says it. I run. And Paul is a perfect example of someone who ran the race in the midst of persecution. None of us have been persecuted more than Paul has been. None of us have gone through what Paul had gone through. Paul had been shipped Shipwrecked many, many times, not one time. Shipwrecked many times. He had been in prison multiple times. He had been flogged many times, beaten, bruised uh, many times. He, he has gone through the worst, the extreme of what one can go through for this region. Paul had gone through that and Paul never gave up. He came out of prison and he preached. He came out of the shipwreck and he was preaching. He was preaching to those he was shipwrecked with. He preached to them. But to, for us, I don't understand this kind of religion that we have that says go disappear, run away from believers, run away from everything. It's not godly. It's not how it's meant. We are supposed to run the race until the end. A soldier dies in the battlefield. A soldier dies in the battlefield. You rather collapse on the pulpit and, and be buried. You rather collapse in the church and be buried. You rather collapse the one it's a beauty to die in the presence of the Lord. What a legacy you have learned that he walked with God until he was no more. Why God? Don't you want people to say that? Don't you want to leave that legacy that you walked with God until you were no more? Literally dying in the presence of the Lord. I am so to you. can't believe how tired I am. Like, I don't even need to explain because you really won't understand how exhausted I am. But that's not important. It's a non-factor. If I die because of my fatigue, I died serving. I died doing what the Lord has called me to do. It's beautiful. Imagine dying because I'm tired of of, 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 of sleeping around like men have done all they could and I'm tired. Imagine that stupidity, that foolishness. If I die doing the work of the Lord, it's a beautiful thing. Therefore, this message, I think, I'm, 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 of being led by the Spirit, it comes from that. It comes from, from that, that we need to be believers that are led by the Spirit and not by our flesh and not by our emotions and not by, by, by the, our circumstances and the thing that have and around us. I think I'm a perfect example for you. I came out of my husband's funeral and I went to my preaching because what's the reason for, tell me what is the reason for me to stay? Why would I have stayed? I would have died here. I would have died here in this house all by myself because I was mourning and, and listening and mourning and mourning somebody who's not going to come back. My husband was not going to come back at any given point. I know many people didn't understand when I came back and I, I, and I preached. I went and I preached. I I still believe I still stand by that decision that I made. And if for you, if you decide to go and, and sit in a corner and feel sorry for yourself, if that's going to work for you, go do well done. Go and sit there and feel sorry for But that was not for me. That is not my nature. That's not my character. I don't sit. I've gone through the worst. When I was going through the worst, I was at church every Sunday. Every Sunday. I was doing the women's ministry. I was leading the women. I was there 100% of the time. 
People in my church, some of them, I'm sure they learned years later that I have lost everything I've got because I, they, I, they never showed it. There was never a time I disappeared from the church. There was never a time I was in a, in a mental institution or reception. I'm not saying if you're going through that, it's, it's wrong to go to through those things. It's fine if you're sick, go and get attention. But I did not go through that. I was blessed enough to stand because uh, that's the character, that's my the kind of person that I am. That I go on, I continue because to God, that's where I get my strength. Not outside of God. Not in, in, in the hospital bed. Not in myself sitting here feeling sorry by myself. Because if I feel sorry for myself, I'm going to binge on TV programs and what's happening to my mind. I'm just Dying my man, it's getting duller by the moment. I'm gaining nothing from that. But when I walk this walk, I walk, I continue to walk, I gain my strength as I continue to walk at the exercise of walking. Today I'm stronger, today I'm standing, today I, I, I believe that I can give somebody an advice on how to continue and how to go on because I refuse to listen to the flesh. Therefore, it is important for us to listen from somebody who's been through a, a thousand things already i'm talking i think i'm i'm rightly positioned to speak about this because i've been through many things and through them all i have never given up through them all i have never disappeared through them all i have never said morose i pick myself up the next day oh, oh, oh i cry oh i am a crier i cry oh i i cry I cry, I cry, but I wipe my tears and I go on. I wipe my tears and I go on. I was crying as early as last week. I was crying like I cry all the time, but I don't sit and wallow in tears and in self-pity. That's not going to help me. Mine is to continue running this race until Jesus comes back or until I am taken to heaven, having left my mark on earth, having left my, my uh, legacy, having not given my life in into the hands of the enemy to control, having not been led by the enemy on what to do, having not been told by the enemy when to wake up, when to sleep, when to eat. Imagine, imagine how sad is that? How, how sorrowful is that for the enemy to tell you that now you must sleep and sleep for days and you listen and Riza always laughs because I always say the enemy will invite you to a dinner table, lay it table take out the fork and knife it is up to your choice to sit with him and eat with the fork and knife he always invites us to that table to take our fork and knives and, and cut and eat it is up to you to go and sit on that table i refuse to sit on the table of the enemy and eat with fork and knife he tells you now go to wash now don't wash for days <laughs> imagine that letting somebody knowing fully well that is not the voice of god this is an evil voice and yet you choose you choose to abide by that voice you choose to listen to that voice what is the point of our walk with God then because our walk with God should help us so that when we get to these places when to get to the witness that we have that the voices of God the word of God may be able to pick us up and dig us out of these holes that we find ourselves in because the devil surely has, has opened many holes he has dug many holes for us to go in. But the voice of God that we have been eating for years, that we have been eating for months, it is the one that should help us to pick us up and give us a firm foundation to stand on and give us a rock to stand on so that we may not go deeper into these things. So to, for you to listen to the enemy, oh my God, refuse. Refuse, refuse, refuse to listen to the voice of the enemy. Refuse for him to tell you today we're sleeping all day. Who are you sleeping with? Tell me. I, I, let, let, let's be so. I love being so. I love the overthinking things. I love being conscious about things. Who are you sleeping with in that bed that tells you today we cover ourselves with banger? Who is that in that bed with you? That that's demons, literally that's demons that are in the bed with you that tell you today we're not going to wash, we're not taking a bath, we're sitting here and we're crying all day. It's literally demons that are sitting there enjoying your bed smell with you, enjoying that thing with you. It's 
demons. Why are we listening to demons? Why are we letting demons control us, take over our life, tell you where to go, tell you what to do, tell you when to take care of your kids? That is the kids today. Please take care of yourselves. That, that you listen to demons telling you that your kids must take care of themselves today because you are not fit. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight. You are a soldier. We are called into the army of God to be able to fight. It is in these times that we have been trained. The Lord, every time sitting here today, you are being given a muscle. You have not gone through things yet that make you do what I've just said. But the Lord is giving you a muscle now. He's training you so that when those times come, remember those words. When the enemy says, lie in bed, you do, you lay. You always, I always advise that when the enemy speaks, do the opposite. Do like go the opposite way. If he tells you eat pills, oh no, go and eat ice cream. Like, like do the opposite of what he's saying. If he says sleep, then you wake up. He says don't take a bath, then you go and take a bath and go outside. Do the opposite. That's how you fight the enemy. Resist the devil, and he will flee when you resist him. But when you don't resist him. If God says, resist him and he will flee. Imagine what you do when you don't resist him. You say, oh, honey devil. Oh, boo-boo, my boo-boo, my love. Let's come and sit here. Let, let, can we enjoy ourselves? Let's chase out the everybody. Let's chase out the children. Let's get everybody. I love being alone with you, honey boo devil. That's what you are saying. If you don't resist him, you're saying, okay, don't flee. Come and sit here. I'm not resisting you. So, so, so come. Let's sit together. So we need to be radical believers. We, the times that we are in, the times are evil. These are evil times. And it will take a violent generation, a violent spirit, because we are called to go and call others. You know, I was just reading now the book of John. How um, I was actually surprised at how Jesus got his disciples and was like, wow, I didn't know this. Like, why didn't I know this? How didn't I know this? Jesus didn't get his disciples because he went around to all of them. No, no, no. He got a few and the few he got brought many. Like, they, they, he would speak to, to, to Andrew. Um, Andrew will go and get Peter and he will speak to this one and they will go and get Nathaniel. Like, Jesus didn't go around. That's our calling to, to, to be able to raise others so that others may go and raise others. We are called to do that. Therefore, if you are weak, what are we saying? What are we projecting? What are we telling your household about Jesus? What are you preaching to your children? What are you preaching to your neighbor? If you let yourself go because a man left you and all of a sudden you have left yourself go, you don't put on makeup anyway, any day, you don't take baths because a man left you. I'm, I'm like, like seriously, because a man left you, you let yourself go. What are you saying? What are you saying to your kids and everybody? Else. I'm making examples that seem insensitive, but I've been married, I've gone through, so I have a right to speak about this thing. I've been everything. I've been to a husband who has kids in my marriage, like while I'm married. Like, so I've been everything, so I have a right to speak on all these things. Why do you believe? Why do you let yourself go because of other people? You can't. We are preaching by our work. We are preaching by our daily doing. Every time, everything we do, every time you show strength to your daughter and to your son. You are teaching them something. They are learning something from your strength. A mother who continues, a father who continues, and against adversaries, against everything. But you continue, you pick up, you drive them to school, you sing a song of worship, you continue like nobody's business. You don't moan around your kids and mumble and grumble and say, as now you're not doing and you're not doing it. No! Go and get food to eat. Pick up your phone and find food. Don't tell your kids that as Nando Doki, what are you preaching to your kids? Are you preaching a God that does not provide you? What are you saying to them? No, no, no. Just tell somebody that and not up and just send money so that I can feed my kids. And the kids see a mother who provides a mother.
mother who is full of strength, a mother who makes magic, a mother who has a God that can take care of everything, not a mother that says, yeah, and yes, that says, I can't do it, I'm going to work. Come to get a cup of tea. Zipeli, peli, zipeli, let's say song, let's say song. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy on us, Lord have mercy on us. We need to be very spiritual people, strong. Spiritual means strength, spiritual means power. Spiritual, it doesn't mean and you get goosebumps and you shake. No, spiritual means power, taking authority, taking over your life, continuing against adversaries, and putting your best foot forward and making a decline. Declaration is a spirit that the just shall live by faith. You walk by faith. You do things by faith. You speak by faith. I told you that this one time that I, I, I got a call when my daughter was going to go to college. They are so prim and proper. They, they give me a call that we, Mrs. Tumi, Mrs. Tumi, we've made an appointment for you uh, to come and buy a uniform. Um, I don't even have a, a brown, a brown scent, like a brown scent. And I said, oh, okay, no, 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 not on that day. And you can give me an appointment the next week. So I'm, I'm trying to, to see where I will get this money. And then I prayed. And I got the money, 5,000 rands. And I was walking there with my daughter. We were laughing so hard in that room. We were busy shopping and, and swiping. And I'm saying, sweetie, <laughs> sweetie, as that swipe, she sees now strength. She sees a mother who believed that she didn't have the money the, the, the last week. And my daughter is such a woman of faith that even today, she, she doesn't see poverty. She doesn't see lack because I never projected that. I never gave her that sign. She came from school and there was food on the table. She wanted to go to school. There was petrol in the car because I made magic. It was my responsibility to show to my daughter a God that provides. That girl, that little girl, has known a God that provides, a God that can do all things, a God that has given her everything that she wanted every day of her life. As her mother had no penny, her father had no penny. That is the kind of God that the spirituality of our walk is strength. The spirituality of our walk is authority. The spirituality of our walk is power, not weakness. Let the weak say, I I am strong. Let, that's what your Bible says. He says, declare the opposite of what is happening. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. That is the God that we serve. He says, this is the place of madness. This is the place of, of illogic. People who have logic here don't survive. People who count one plus one and it makes two. They, they are not of this kingdom. This is a kingdom of one plus one. It becomes 2000 that is the kind of God himself and he wants us to follow his example to do things his way not our way because our way is not serving us it is serving the opposite of what you are supposed to serve it is not serving our God it is serving the enemy let's wake up saints and not be servants of the enemy we are servants of the most high God we have a higher calling upon our lives therefore let us rise up to that higher calling. The disciples showed us this walk is not easy. It's not going to be easy for us. We were not promised easiness. Jesus says we will go through afflictions, but he says, remember, I have already conquered the world. Therefore, Jesus promises affliction. He did not lie to us. So I don't understand the salvation that we have, that when afflictions come, we start questioning God. We start going away from God. We start running away. We start being angry at God. We have things that we call, I'm angry against God. I, I don't, that, that's not the language of the Bible, of course. It's the, the language of the other camp because we dwell more on the other camp. Therefore, we acquire language from the other camp because our feet are more on the other camp than in this camp of Jesus. So we have things like language that says, I'm angry against God. I'm bitter against God. And you, you you think you are saying something when you say that. That's, that's, that's actually the sad part. When we say that, we think we are actually saying something like we, we think we, we are saying something big or something impactful like we, we, we are making a statement. 
If you say nothing, Jesus, you are saying nothing. Like you, you, you've just not spoken when you say that. I'm angry. Kiss <laughs> God. Oh, the, how we think God is like our sugar daddy and our father Christmas. He doesn't care. If you are angry against him, he literally doesn't care. Because he, he says, do not be angry. So he's looking at someone that is in sin. He's looking at a sinner actually. He's saying, oh, now he, they're coming against my word. Do not go to bed angry. And you go on for weeks. Not going to church, not going anywhere because you are angry against the very God. He says, Do not go to bed angry. So he's looking at Abraham, how you embrace him, how you love the devil, how you sitting with the devil, how you love communing with the devil instead of the spirit of God, instead of finding things that will strengthen you. We find the language of the world and we embrace that language and we make it our language and we pass on the language unto others now. People have a language say, I'm angry against God because they heard me say, I'm angry against God. They heard you say, I'm angry. So they think it's something that is cute and normal. It's not cute. It's not cute. Do not go to bed angry. So anger against God is sin. You are walking in sin. And now you're talking the language of the devil and he's happy. Oh, he's happy. He's saying, sweetheart, I keep you here. Let's let's be angry against God. I love people who are angry against God. I am also angry against God. Remember, he chased me out of heaven, so I am angry. So come to my camp, sweetie. Let's all be angry against God. You see? That's how you sound. That's how the devil applauds you. Therefore, let's correct our language. Let's correct our language. Let's even in your deepest, darkest moments, find the language in the scripture. Find something to say. Find life. Speak life upon your situation. Speak life until your last day. Until if you die in that situation, it's well and good. Speak life upon that situation. Because, the, you know, the words of life are generational. The words of life continue. You may die, but your children may step onto those words of life. They may step onto that which you have declared and professed on the next day. They may step onto that and they are eyes will explode because a mother or a father spoke words of life upon their situation and left a firm and a solid foundation for their children. We are being generational here. We are not longer building things that don't last. We are building generational things. Abraham died and his children left on his righteousness. They lived on his righteousness, on his one thing, righteousness, and they continue to live because their father was a righteous man. Their father spoke the language of the heavens. He spoke. He, their father caressed the heart of God. He caressed the heart of God. Therefore, the whole generation, we are looking for people that says, we are hard-pressed but not crushed. Why are we crushed? What happened to being hard-pressed and not crushed? Why are we believers that are crushed today? Why are we crushed? We are hard pressed but not crushed. We should not be crushed. Do you know why we should not be crushed? Because inside of us there's the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Therefore that spirit cannot be crushed. Therefore if the enemy crushes the outside, that spirit fortifies us from the inside. Therefore we cannot be crushed because the walls of on our inside are fortified. Why are we being crushed today? Why are we being us that are crushed. It is not in the word. We fall apart at every corner. We fall apart at every turn. We cannot withstand anything. We are weak. We, we, we worst part is that we have been walking with God for years. And the sad part about that, so maybe, maybe, maybe sometimes we should not even tell people how long we, we have been saved because really it's embarrassing. We, we should just hide that. He really, because the, 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 the evidence in our lives and the, 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 the lifestyle we live, the faith that we possess, it, it's not of those that who have walked with God for many years. 
Our walk with God to tell that I am not a baby believer. I, I see things from a, from a higher point, a vantage point. I have a vantage point. Like John has been called up higher. I move higher. I perceive things in the spirit. I don't perceive things in the flesh. But we sound like baby Christians. You come into church, you cannot tell a baby Christian for, for, from a, one who has been saved for many years. We all sound the same. We talk the same. No one rebukes each other because we sound the same. We are all all drinking milk, sing, nah, 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 nah. eat dummy. We have eat dummies in the church. We have dummies in the church. There's a section for dummies in the church where we all go and, and take our dummies and, and we suck on our dummies. When we should be like slashing bones, the church should be a place of rock. I'm bones cracking everywhere. But how are, where are we? We are in the dummy section. The nappies are piling. There's a smell in the church because there's a pile of nappies from all believers. From all, from me and you, me and you, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing that we still are on nappies. Yes, years later, we are still wearing nappies. God is not pleased. I did not even go to my message. <laughs> it's apparent next week I'll, I'll, I'll pick up on that. Uh, but the Holy Spirit wants me to speak like this and not, not quote the word. I'll quote the words next week for you. But God is concerned about this kind of believer that we are. He is concerned about this weakling that we are. Christ did not give back to weaklings. I mean, the price we have been paid for is a price of strength. Nails. He had nails on his hands. He had nails on his feet. His back was bruised and beaten. He, he paid a price that, that was, was painful and, 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 and varied here. He did not pay a weak price. Christ could have just come on from heaven and walked the earth and the transaction was done because he walked the earth. He, because the Lord says, wherever you step your feet, I have given you the land. Christ could have just done that. Step his feet on the earth, walk around the earth and be done. But he did not do that. He, he, he went through pain. He went through crushing. Why? Why are we believers that can't take pain and crushing? God is a God that crushes anything that produces good things has been crushed, has been pressed, so that what is good out of you should come out. But ah, for us, oh my God, when we are crushed, oh, something comes out like it's not what you expect. And it's not what you expect when, when you crush me. You, you don't care. When you crush me, you don't get what you expect. Like I curse instead of blessing. I, I curse. But the Bible says, bless your enemies. But if you crush me, I curse immediately. That should not be what's coming out of me at this stage of my life. I should say, bless, oh, bless you. Oh, bless you, bless you. Uh, even if you hurt me, I said, oh, God bless you. And I move on from that. But, ah, no moving on. I hold on. I remember it. I remember it five years later, what you did to me. This is how you treated me. This is how you do not care for me. <laughs> five years later. The Lord says, bless your enemies. If you had blessed, you would have moved on. But you cursed. So you are anti-God. And God is waiting for you to fix that mistake. Remember what he says to Cain. He says, sin is waiting for you by the door. It wants to have you. But you can master sin. God is waiting for us. For that part where we master sin. We go and fix our mistake. We go and say, I'm sorry. We go and apologize. We go and make things right. He's waiting for us to be masters of sin but no we are led by the flesh the flesh tells you that i'm not gonna apologize i was not wrong they were wrong they did me wrong and it was not the first time the first three days and that and that that is the flesh speaking to us the flesh preaching to us the spirit says go and apologize master over sin take control of your life don't go around sowing enemies so friends more than you sow enemies Enemies, but the flesh says, oh, make as many enemies as you can get and move on and go and, and stick with a few friends. It's unbiblical. 
world, the things here. And the sad part is that these things have we have bought into these things, and they have become part of our culture. And we teach each other these things. Uh, we teach each other these things. I tell you that ah, by a kind. Ah, by a kalasan, ooh, by and all those things. So we, we, we perpetuate this culture of non-biblical things, non-biblical teaching. We pass them on one to another, one to another, all the time. And we continue on this trajectory of going to hell while we're calling ourselves believers. We hurt each other every day because we have more spikes than the marshmallow. We spike, we are, we, we, we are prickly pairs in the church. We hate each other all the time. We are sensitive. We are like, uh, what? what's this pair that has spikes? Once you touch it, the spikes come out like this and, and they will hurt you. That's the believers today. We are more spiky than marshmallow. The word is not softening us. The word is not doing anything for, to us. The spirit of God that is supposed to be transforming, it is not transforming us. We remain the same. And years go by you remain in the same place that's why when troubles come you fall apart because you are still stuck in year 2012 in the year 2024 you are standing in 2012 and god is saying nothing is gonna happen into your life until you move from 2012 and come to 2024 so we are these balls that cannot be touched you touch me you 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 touch me you <laughs> You touch me. I will show you who I am. You will know who I am. And Kalamna, don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. We are those kinds of person. I know I am one of those people. It shouldn't be like that. It should not be that like that. The word that we have received should be a transformational word. We should be transformed. We should be renewed in our minds by the word. The word should wash us and cleanse us. It says, though their sins are as black as coal, they shall be as white as snow. But we remain in the blackness. We don't move to the whiteness. We, there, there, there's not even a gray area with us. We remain there. We don't move to that. And God is watching us. So when these troubles come, they find us in the same place because we have been in the same place for many years. We have just come to church and we lift our hands. We master, we master the, the, the gimmicks. We master the gimmicks. We, we know. You, have you seen how your hand just lifts up? How you react to? So if, if I play on Gia Sabella for says I know what to do immediately. My head does something. So I've mastered the, the gimmicks of, 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 of these things. But I'm still the same. And, and Sabelanga Nix. And, and Sabelanga Nix. I, I, I just love the thing. You know, the Holy Spirit rebuked me in church one day and I went and shared in the church the lord said to me you know sometimes the people are, are in the spirit in the church and god is saying they, they're just emotional the songs that even as it starts playing you already like lifting your hands you already have emotions and feeling the song is is not has not even touched you it's just that you you you're living from the past you're living from the experience of the past and these songs are not even glor glorifying the lord the song is saying he is holy he is holy but you are more blessed than god you are more, the song touches you that more, more than you giving God the glory and telling him he's holy. When we're telling God he is holy, we should be sober and not emotional and not, not have goosebumps about that. We should be telling God he's holy and we should be sober and standing there and just saying he's holy. No emotions, nothing happening to us. It's God who should be tickled by the words that he is holy. But church has made us to, to have all these kinds of emotions when he's holy. Holy. We're already crying. We're already doing this thing. And you do the same thing that you did last week and last year when that song plays. You do, you, you act exactly the same thing because we have mastered these motions and nothing is changing as a result. God should be blessed. God should be having tears when we say he is holy. Not you and me. Me and you should be just like we are today. Like this I'm so saying. You are holy. 
Oh, so holy. And nothing, I'm not moved. No emotions, no heart of mine is moved. But God's heart should be moved. That's why we are not changed. That's why there's no transformation. Because we are emotional about things that are supposed to be spiritual. We are emotional. And then troubles come. They test us that we are actually nothing. We are made of coal. And we are not made of the rock. We are coal. Troubles come. They crush you. You fall apart. Because you were never spiritual in the first place. You were just emotional. Be more spiritual people. Don't fall apart. And things come. A thousand fall dead beside them. Ten thousand all around them. But they remain standing. That's spiritual people. They do.